Okay, uh, welcome back here to the M How Nine Fish Tanks channel. Um, I'm going to take a look here and see if chat is enabled. It was saying that chat was disabled earlier. So let me go ahead here and see what's going on. All right, so it does look like the uh, chat is working, so that's good. Good stuff. So we'll wait for people to pile in, and we can go ahead and get us get started. So uh, we'll wait for people to uh, pile in here. Uh, we've got Vinovsky tanks in the house. Uh, welcome. Uh, is the auto and everything good? Uh, I'm using Google Hangouts tonight because uh, we're gonna do some uh, we're gonna do some research. So I want to be able to share my screen. So. So, uh, so, so like I said, we're going to wait for some folks to pile in and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right, we got Mr. D's tanks and more. Uh, welcome to the stream. So uh, once we get going here, we are going to do a little bit of research. Uh, I'm going to show you guys a, a website uh, that I've used before, uh, a lot in the saltwater world to uh, research various fish species, et cetera. Uh, but like I said, we'll get some folks piled in here, and uh, we'll go ahead and get going. Couple of people that are here right now. How are uh, how are you guys doing? Um, everything going well with your tanks? So I am using Google Hangouts tonight. It's a different uh, software. Uh, I do want to share my screen out. So uh, so I want to show you guys the site. So like I said we'll give it a few minutes. Um, you know, hopefully we can get five or six people and then I can go ahead and get going. I don't want to make you guys sit for, for too long. Okay, so Mr. D's tanks had a uh, minor scare and it's 55, uh, but it's okay. Uh, that sounds that's good. Um, you know, I hate I have those occasionally too. You know, I had... Um, uh, Sunday, the uh, I had to switch some outlets and stuff around. I had too much stuff on one uh, one breaker, so that I had to switch that all around. So uh, I threw a breaker out, so uh, that wasn't good. But uh, got it fixed. It's no big deal. So I so understand. So I don't want to keep the uh, folks that are here waiting. So let's go ahead and get started with the. Uh, we'll do a little bit of an update on the fish barn itself. And then uh, we'll go ahead here and go through the fish. It's called fishbase.org is the website. And it'll give you all kinds of good information. 
Uh, so basically right now what's going on with the barn, uh, the last video, um, I really would like to thank Jeff Rose Fish Keeping for uh, sharing out my last video on Sunday. Uh, so I've spent a lot of Thanksgiving break uh, really just cleaning up out here, really getting it getting it cleaned. Um, uh, Mr. D's, uh, so his driftwood breaking down looked like mold. Yeah, mold's kind of a not good thing. So glad it worked out. So, so I would have spent a lot of time out here cleaning up, uh, getting things situated. Uh, still got a little bit more to go. Um, so we're going to get going, you know. So there'll be another video coming out on that uh, probably Sunday. Uh, there's a little bit more I have to do out here. Um, I am going to build a new computer. Uh, I do want to get s some more power out here and maybe do like a video segment, kind of like Joel does, but uh, I'm not there yet. And uh, this laptop that I'm using doesn't really, isn't really capable. I tried it with OBS and didn't really work too well. Uh, so let's, with that being said, let's go ahead and get going with the uh, website itself. I'm going to put the link here in the chat and then I'm going to do a screen share. So... So there is the link, the site itself, and we'll do the screen share. Okay. And can you guys see it? I'm actually going to jump on my phone real quick here so I can see the chat while I'm doing this. So, so this is the uh, fishbase.org website. Um, it says fishbase.de. So it's a very, let me just get my, my phone turned down here. Uh, Mr. D says he can't see it. All right. It looked like it tested it out yesterday. Let me see here what it's doing. Um. YouTube is spinning, and what's Google Hangouts doing? Oh, I didn't hit share, but it helps. All right, now you guys should be able to see it. Uh, do you guys see it now? And you're going to see the – all right, there you go. You can see it. Okay. All right, so, uh, so basically uh, this site – you can search a bunch of different things. So just kind of a quick overview first. Uh, you have the common name. So you can look up a species by common name. You can look it up by the scientific name. Um, there's a glossary in here. I've never used the glossary. Uh, but I guess if you find a term that you can't figure out, you can use that. Um, you can do information by family. Uh, you can do by country and island. So the reason that kind of got this, uh, this kind of came to my mind. Oh, uh, looks like one fish, two fish is in the chat. So, uh, welcome Elizabeth. It's nice to, uh, nice to have you come by. So you can look up a, a bunch of different information on here. So if you keep scrolling down, um, information by ecosystem, uh, there's something called the regional interfaces. Uh, there's some tools. Uh, you can do some references and stuff, and, and you're getting down pretty scientific once you get down into here. Like, you know, you got the index journals and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and I'll show you what's in here. So we'll start out. Um, last night I played around with this a little bit too. Uh, so we I did bluegill, which is a Native fish to, uh, I'm in Michigan. So let's search up bluegill. So pulls up your bluegill. Um, it gives you all the classification information. So it's like a ray fin fish. It's perch like. It's in the sunfish family. Um, there's some Greek information here on um, the environment. So it gives you the pH range, um, hardness information. Temperature information. 
and then it gives you like the distribution you know it's a gold it's a uh bluegill so it's uh north america so basically great lakes mississippi river quebec to northern mexico it's widely introduced uh, there's some ecological impact gives you the size uh the description uh which for some fish can be important and then it has the um you know where they're found life cycle uh some reference information but one of the really cool things i mean i guess first we'll show you this um so it's got the iucn red status so it gives you like if it's an endangered fish or not so this is a least concerned uh it's got sites um which means it's not excuse me not review uh, not evaluated it's not a threat to humans which i think would be pretty obvious um it's a bluegill i mean it's you're more of a threat to it. Um, the potential pest, which I found kind of funny. And then let's go ahead down here. If you look down here, so go to food items. So if you pull up food items, it'll show you what it eats. So in this particular case, So the food items for this fish, so it was eating like amphipods, uh, bony fish. I was eating like minnows, shrimps, insects. So so we'll click on the amphipods for a minute. So it'll give you a bunch of different information. Um, nothing terribly i mean give it a, a scientific name i don't know what this is exactly but it also gives you some um so basically like gut samples too and i'm looking for those just give me one second go back here I found something yesterday. Oh, we go to diet. Sorry, I was... all right. So, so this is these are basically gut samples of the fish themselves. So if we pick, um. So if we pick Crane Lake, Indiana, that's where they actually collected this fish. And if we just click on the zooplankton, so I hear in this particular particular fish they were testing, um, they did it between June, July, and August. Um, they were juveniles, and so they were eating crustaceans. So they were basically eating like copepods, um, various planktons, and stuff like that. So that's the bluegill. But let's go and do a. Uh, oh, so sorry, I wasn't reading the chat. So. So uh, yeah, thank you for uh, having the likes, Elizabeth. I appreciate it. Let me get the. All right, so let's go ahead now and look up something a little more, uh, a little more interesting, I think, than the uh, than the bluegill. But that was a good one to start with. Does anyone have a fish that we want to do in the chat? I can pull up fish if you'd like, or if someone else would want me to pull up one, I'll go ahead and put it in the chat, and I'll pull up whatever you want, and we can kind of have a little bit of fun. Yeah, Elizabeth said it. I cannot begin to <clears throat> imagine the work that took to put this together. Yeah, this is like a big database. So, and I believe it's actually like crowdfunded. So if you see here, there's this donate. Um, I'll click on it and see what it says. I've actually never done it. So, 
You can support it uh, by donating to Q Aquatics, a non-government, non-profit organization that runs fish base. So obviously I'm not going to do that on the uh, um, internet, but it <clears throat> says here we, you know, we need um, about $500,000 to uh, for the data and encoding. So this is uh, this is pretty cool stuff. So if you guys want to support that, um, definitely uh, definitely would do that. All right, blue-eyed Gertrude. All right, so let's look at the blue-eyed Gertrude. All right, we're gonna have to. Uh, we might have to look up the species name on that. Let me let me go ahead and uh, go ahead and do that real quick. All right. All right, we got it here. Let's hit search. Hey, uh, Jeff Rowe is here. So uh, welcome, Jeffro. So we're just going through the uh, fishbase.org website. Um, so I'm giving you guys basically kind of a tour of it. Um, so in the beginning of the video on the replay, if you want, you can check out. Um, you can check out, you know, the beginning of it. Kind of, uh, kind of walk through it. Uh, we looked up a bluegill. So, uh, so something that I know you do a lot of fishing. So something you're well familiar with, but it was kind of fun to walk through that one. So someone in the chat gave me, uh, Mr. Mr. D's gave me uh, pseudo mill, <clears throat> pseudo bugill Gertrude. And I really messed that up. Um, so basically same information here as we saw with the bluegill, uh, gave you the uh, environment. So it's freshwater brackis, uh, brackish, um, demersal, which means it basically spawns in caves and stuff, kind of like the clownfish, uh, pH range, hardness range, uh, temperature in Celsius uh, gives you the distribution, uh, Asia and Oceania, uh, the size, and no one put a size on it. Kind of interesting. And then this gets kind of interesting for people who get real serious. Uh, for example, in the clownfish world, there's something called an Ocellaris and a Percula, and they look very similar. So if you wanted to go look up those fish um the difference i always use the eyes for them for example the, just something that's very simple that I, that I use and how it swims it's more of a visual but if you run to get really technical i believe one of them has 12 dorsal spines and the other one has 13. so that's the kind of stuff you can find here <clears throat> it gives you the bi the uh, biology so it gives you small swamps marshes rainforests really good Lily lagoons, backwaters, etc. Uh, nothing on the life cycle, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, it references Gerald Allen, a uh, pretty famous uh, ichthyologist. Uh, so it's harmless to humans. So not as much on this one. So, so this one does not have a diet on it. That's kind of unfortunate. Uh, so. So let's see. Let's see if there's a fact sheet. That came up with nothing. So apparently they don't like rainbow fish. So I am going to show you one other thing real quick, and we'll find another fish. This one didn't go too well. So let me go back. So, 
someone asked one time about uh, I was on a Facebook post. They're like, I'm trying to set up a, a biotope. So I was able to find that in here. And I remember where I did. I think I did. Fortunately, I was going to look up a few more things earlier. I just didn't have a chance. So fish base for... So let's do uh, Fish Base Americas. Let's see what that says. So this is the Americas. So if you wanted to do information about ecosystem, so if you went to Amazon, um, See what it says point data. So wherever this is in Brazil, this website is not private. So let's not do that. So we don't want to have attackers steal our stuff. We're going to go back. Where did I find that? So I apologize. I should have been a little bit more prepared on for looking this up. But let's see. Uh, information by country. So if you... So let's try... Pick Peru. Get fresh water. See what it says. So it gives you these fish um, that are from Peru. So you can kind of start building your. Um, so there's 18 pages of fishes on here. So basically, there's 18 pages of different fish from Peru that you could look up on here. I mean, I don't think you know you're going to get the Guyana anchovy, for example, but you can go uh, you can go ahead of here and pick. Um, so this is a pike Saracen. So let's look at this one. There you go. That one's pretty. Uh, that one is pretty uh, pretty wild looking. So I wonder if uh, I wonder if anyone so it's uh, so it's freshwater. Uh, so let me let's see what else we can find on this one. So here again are the uh, description of the uh, dorsal, um, anal spines, etc. If you want to get super technical, not evaluated for anything on the CITES. Um, there are some food items. Let's check out the food items. So basically, um, looks like it's eating other fin fish, which makes sense. That looks like something that would do that. All right, so let's find something else. I saw something else that was pretty common. So uh, thread fin de cara. So uh, geophagus heckeli, which I actually have downstairs in the fish barn. So let's go ahead here and pull that up. All right, so there's the Geophagus Heckeli. has no common name. Um, it's a native fish to Peru. Uh, let's see. Gives you the same sort of information. And for the this one doesn't have diet either. So again, this has the food items. So you so if you're learning to see what something eats, so this one so it has a little bit more. So it's got um, some invertebrates, um, detritus. Um, it's an earth eater, so that's kind of makes sense. Uh, some plant matter. So if you have one of these fish, you'd want to give it some plant matter. 
and then uh, some insects. So that's something I think from a Geo Vegas you kind of expect. So let's go ahead here and I want to try to find one that has a lot of good information on it. So I'm going to do, we're going to do. So if you, uh, Must be spelling it wrong. It's fine, then we'll do this one. And sisters. All right, so we'll try. Uh, And we may have killed it. <laughs> All right, that didn't help. All right, let me think of one. There you go. All right, so we've got uh, 10 folks here now. So uh, thank you everyone for uh, hanging out. All right, so I think what I did here is I need to go back to the, out of the Americas. I think I, we, I went too far uh, into the rabbit hole here. So let's go back to, so you, can, you can like really go down the, uh, All right, go to the global fish base. All right. Now, that's probably why I didn't pull up the clownfish. There. Yeah, I was like, all right. All right, good. there we go. So this is a percular clownfish. So if you go down here, it gives you the same... Um, basic classification data. Uh, this one's marine reef associated, non migratory stuff. Basically, that's what a clownfish is. So, go down here. Uh, remember, we were talking about the dorsal spines and stuff with the clownfish. So, that's the, um, the kind of stuff we were talking about. Uh, when you get really into like high level like breeding and identification and stuff like that, people get pretty interested in in this kind of stuff. So it's kind of why it's there. So basically, uh, biology and life cycle. Uh, again, Gerald Allen. Oops, sorry about that. And then, uh, so then it's not evaluated for any of the CITES or anything. So. All right, so this one doesn't have any food items either. That's getting kind of striking out on that, which is surprising. But a lot of them will give you uh, the gut information. If you click on diet, it will give you the... Someone will have actually, like, tested the... Um, tested the guts of the fish and seen what it's actually been eating. So let's try... Um, I'm going to try that. Let's try Asian over here. There we go. Silver arowana. So. 
So we've got the silver arowana here, shows the juvenile. So uh, body covered with big scales. It tends, it's an omnivore. So this one has some food items in it. So you can see here, so there's quite a few. Uh, so basically, you can see here there's been eating insects, bony fish, plants, prawns, so quite a few different things. So uh, it looks like Chris is here. Uh, welcome, Chris, to the, uh, the live stream. So yeah, there's quite a few different uh, different things you can look at in here. So I want to find one with a good food up, food one again. All right, so let's take a look at this one. Uh, so Coral Vids is here. Uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, great to watch the progress of your fish room. Oh, so I think this is Kevin. Um, so Kevin, um, yeah, so I've known Kevin for quite a long time. So uh, he and I have uh, met at quite a few magnas back in the day. He's actually from uh, from Australia. So uh, definitely welcome to the stream. So we've got the uh, red-tailed shark. So gives you the same information. And I'm sure Kevin um, has uh, played quite a bit in here. So if those guys, who's, those of you who don't know, Kevin is a, a Ph.D., um, so he's Dr. Kevin on this sort of stuff. So this is something interesting here. So this here now is, you know, critically endangered. It's not evaluated by CITES, not a threat to humans, um, obviously harmless. And then, again, I can show you guys again it's the food items. So basically eating uh, a bunch of crustaceans. Uh, insects, detritus, similar bottom dweller. Uh, similar bottom dweller. So, <laughs> so yeah, Kevin loves fish base. So yeah, I do too. It's uh, probably quite a few, uh, quite a few different things you can search on here. So I am actually going to, unless you guys want to look up something else. Um, I'm gonna actually going to flip away from screen sharing. Um, so let's go ahead here and flip away from screen sharing, and we'll go back to me. All right, so I'm back. So... I hope you guys really enjoyed taking a look through uh, fish base. I'm sure there's a lot more you guys can see in there. Oh, silver dollar. Okay, so I'll go back and screen share again, Chris. So let me go back to the screen share. Just give me one second. Oh, so uh, yeah, so so Kevin's got a couple of other ones. He's got uh, worms is good too. Uh, MarineSpecies.org. So I've never checked those out, but I, I will now. 
So we've got the uh, silver dollar. Um, let's try this one. All right. So this is a. This might be a sunfish. Yeah. So Kevin's uh kicking the knowledge here. So definitely got um got a lot more knowledge in this than I do. So 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 we've got the uh, silver dollar here. Uh, it's in the Tapajos River in Brazil. Uh, biology. It's a uh, weedy. Basically, a popular aquarium fish. Uh, it's assumed to be like this other one that's hypsauction. Uh, so obviously, it's not threatened. It's not harmless to us. And uh, unfortunately, again, this one doesn't have any diet. So unfortunately, the bluegill had the uh, bluegill is the only one so far that had a uh, that had the uh, gut analysis. I'm trying to think of a. Let's try another one. Worms, sweetly, really, yeah, yeah, yeah. There. All right. Um, think of another one that would be. All right, so we'll do the uh, the uh, volatans lionfish. So again, if you were trying to differentiate that between a some other kind of lionfish, you may come to the dorsal spines, anal spines, etc. Um, the biology. Uh, talks about the uh, venomous spines. Yeah, so you've seen this fish on um, the King of DIY's channel. Uh, he may not have this particular species, but he has a lionfish. So, um, so it's definitely not endangered. Um, it is venomous, so obviously you don't pet it. So this one does have a diet. So finally found one with a diet on it. So. So it's interesting. So this one um, was in the northern and central Bahamas where it's... Uh, so those of you who don't know, lionfish are quite a bit of a problem now in Florida and the Caribbean because they're eating all of the other fish that are... We'll call it... That should be there, like things like the... Um, some of like the gramas and stuff that should be there. They're eating a lot of those and, and they're not really supposed to be there. They're doing a lot of fishing um, fishing for them trying to get them out of the reefs I mean it's a, a huge problem unfortunately I don't think they're going to be able to do it I mean there's hope but uh, but unfortunately it's not going to be there so yeah so um, one fish two fish said uh, they've become invasive yeah they're they're pretty bad so unfortunately you know it's it's one that's like people you know let them go or they came in on ships and basically yeah so basically it's a it's a pretty big problem because there's some fish uh, especially if you go down deeper that uh something called like a grama de jongi and i'm sure i've butchered the name but uh but yeah, so it's very much, uh, you know, it's a very sought after fish, and it's, there's only been one person that I know of that's bred it. But uh, so that fish is not supposed to be in the Bahamas. So let's look at that one first. So it looks like you know, it said forty two percent of its gut lobe was nectin. So if we look at what what nectin is, we'll give you some more information here. So this particular fish or fishes. So. All right, so this is exactly what I'm talking about. So it, it ate, 
it ate a uh, so as he had 0.5 percent crabs it had these other shrimps and, and prawns and people actually went through and identified the species so for those of you uh, so there's a helic I don't know what that one is. Um, there's a chromis in here, that, so eight six point two percent of a chromis. Um, it had the Grama Loretta, which is the royal Grama. For those of you who may be um, maybe not as familiar with the saltwater side, but the Grama Loretta was one of those fish that um, I can even pull it up. You'll you'll probably recognize it. So, so, yeah, so you guys recognize that fish? So that's what I was talking about. The lionfish are eating Lee Santa fish. And, uh, and like I said, they're not supposed to be there. So the, the royal grandma doesn't know to get out of the way of the lionfish. So... So that's kind of what I'm talking about when I do that. So, so it ate some of this chromis, um, which I mean, I've not heard of. Uh, so this uh, pseudopennis maculatus. So you can look these things up and see, okay. You know, you can look and see, you know, what this thing is eating. And so this is like a very good research tool if, if you have a fish that you don't really know a lot about. Uh, you know, this is a good, you know, a really good tool. So does anyone else have any questions? Um, or do you guys uh, have anything else you want me to look up? Yeah, the purple and yellow, the, uh, the royal gramas are pretty cool. I'll show you the other one I was talking about too. The grandma. So this is the one that's super rare. So that's the one that's super rare. So that is um, so that's the uh, gram, and this is I don't know how much this fish goes for anymore. Mola mola equals best fish. <laughs> yeah, um, those are the sunfish, I think. Right, Kevin? Those are the um, or are those the dolphin fish? I'm I don't eat a lot of fish, but yeah, this is a gorgeous fish, Mister Deeds. But uh, um. You might want to bring your wallet with you. Here, we'll have a little bit of fun. So, there you go. 5500 bucks. So, bring your paycheck. So, if you want a uh, Grandma Dejongi, uh, you can get one. This is probably at Macna. So you can get it for a uh, cool $5,500 out of my price range. All right. So, all right. So the uh, geophagus. All right. So let me put that one in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, Mister D said uh, fifty five hundred. Dang, yeah. So that, so the reason that is, um, and that fish is collected very deep in the ocean. So basically, someone has to dive with a rebreather and go down there and get that fish. So. Um, so yeah, so that's why a lot of those fish, you know, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of, uh, peppermint angel fish, but, uh, if you can get one, 
Uh, there's probably a handful of people. Uh, there's a handful of people in the world that can get it for you. And unfortunately, it's a good 25 grand if you want one, if you can get it. So let's go ahead here and we will look up the Geophagus. <laughs> yeah, it's got my change jar. Yeah, you're going to need a lot of change. Geophagus. I pour and Genesis. Cool. All right. So, uh, Geophagus, I pour and Genesis. I pour and Genesis, excuse me. So. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and see what we've got here for this one. Not a lot. So um, you look at this ecosystem. So you look at neotropical. Yeah, so fortunately not a whole lot. Uh, so, so, so uh, Chris says, uh, my fish, thanks. <laughs> Look at this. If you don't, keep it in the sock drawer. Yeah. Actually, really, a few uh, really funny, uh, kind of funny stories. One of the things I'm kind of involved with is uh, the Marine Breeding Initiative. And basically what that, um, that's the, we have a conference every year here in Michigan where the, we have the people who breed these fish, like the grandma, the Zhongi, come and speak about it. And as part of the raffle, uh, he actually gave away a pair of them. Uh, fortunately, it's something I didn't really want to win. I didn't want to be responsible for, like, not for keeping it alive in case something happened. But um, there's been that um, given away there, and there's been something called the, uh, the flathead perch as well. Endemic. Mean, means an extinction. No, endemic means um, it means more that it's basically native to that area. Uh, I'll give you a, a better definition. We'll go to our friend, the Google, and we'll show you. I believe it means basically in that it's native to that area. Let me make definition. So... Yeah, so a plant or animal native or restricted to a certain country or area. So that's the official definition. Uh, so uh, one Chris BXL, you were in Belgium, right? So I've been to Belgium, so... Um, I spent a night in Brussels on the way to Amsterdam, which uh, was another time in my life. But it was uh, Brussels was a, lot, was a lot of fun. Uh, BXL stands for Brussels. Yep. So I have been to Brussels. Uh, not very long, but I have been there. So uh, for those of you who don't know, um, I actually, when I was in college, I actually or actually right after college, I lived in England for six months. Um, I actually worked behind Buckingham Palace. So there's a program uh, through the university I went to where you could get a six-month work visa to uh, live in the United Kingdom. So I ended up working at Merrill Lynch as an intern uh, behind the uh, behind Buckingham Palace um, near Victoria Station in London. So it was pretty cool. So I got to uh, hang out in London for six months, travel around. I went, and then I traveled for about a for about three weeks afterwards. So I ended up going to quite a bit of Europe. So the only places I really didn't make it to were Spain. Uh, where else? It was Spain, Portugal, 
um, like Switzerland, um, that kind of area. So I did end up like Italy, um, Denmark, Sweden, Germany. I uh, did end up um, in Hungary and Czechoslovakia or the Czech Republic and Poland. So I actually have been to Budapest. So uh, when Joel and Corey went there and saw the uh, the uh, aquascaping store there, um, I've actually been there. So it's so Budapest is a pretty interesting, uh, pretty interesting place. Uh, so Mr. D's chocolate are my favorite food group. All right. So um, if you guys don't have any other fish to look up, I'm going to go ahead and uh, flip it back to me. All right. So I am back. Um, so I'm back here in the, uh, we're now back in the fish barn and off the internet. So do you guys have any other questions for me about, you know, we can talk about, you know, what's going on in the fish barn. Uh, anything else? So I've still got eight watching. Uh, see, but I think that people protest is stupid and give a bad image of us. Oh, Oh, the, so see the beers, chocolates, and fries are famous. Yeah, unfortunately, I just like I said, I spent like a night there. We were we overnighted there um, on the way to Amsterdam. So let me get off of my phone so I can actually look at the camera. All right, so we're back here. Do um, you have a projected date? So um, Elizabeth, uh, the barn is actually up and running. Uh, right now we are. Oh, so Kevin said the yellow tang video went live on Facebook today. So I'll have to check that out later. Um, but yeah, the fish barn is pretty well. Uh, give us a tour of my fish. All right, here's the problem I have with that. I can, I can do it. Um, I'll, I'll flip it around for a second, the camera, and you can see. Um, I can show you maybe a little bit. Uh, but the problem right now here is that I have a laptop, so I'm just streaming from a laptop. Um, so I would have to uh, carry the laptop around with with the uh, with the microphone that's sitting here. So I mean, I guess what I could do uh, is I could cancel this stream and go live from my phone and try to do it because it's like I did that with uh, Jeremy from Sergeant Tanks. And it was kind of a disaster for me carrying around the uh, all the equipment. But we can give it a try real quick. Oh, so uh, Kevin says he needs to get me a MACNA shirt. So, yes. So, Kevin is the president of MASNA, uh, which does put on MACNA. So, uh, so, I've met him, you know, many, long time ago now. It's probably been five, six, seven years ago. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Kevin, I'll send you my address afterwards if you want to send me a magnet shirt. I'd be happy to uh, be happy to wear that. Okay, if, you, if it's a good time for you in Australia, maybe we can even have you come on the stream. Uh, we can talk a lot about uh, fresh wa uh, saltwater breeding and stuff. Uh, so, uh, Mr. D says, don't put yourself out. Uh, let me see what I can do. I can give you some of it. So, let me turn the camera around from where I'm at. And we'll show you, and I'll try to do it slowly. Um, so this start is still in progress, but that's the clownfish breeding area. Uh, you can see the, uh, you can see, there you, go. you can see the clownfish tubs. Um, unfortunately, I think I lost my second run of clownfish. So I got to see and figure out what I'm doing. I think what's really happening is, uh, yeah, so Kevin is now off to the airport in two hours, but definitely in the future. So, yeah, Kevin, thank you for coming by. So, and then I can flip you guys over this way. I see how much cord I have. So if you go look through the wall, uh, you can see those are the tanks that were in the video uh, from sun, uh, sorry, from Saturday. Or Sunday, excuse me. So those are all the tanks from Saturday. And then if you, and let me see how much cord I've got. I could show you. Um, yes, yeah, Elizabeth. It's a, it's a tough deal, and I'm, I think what I'm doing is I'm gonna set up some sort of better filtration with it. So I gotta do a little bit of research, see what I'm doing. 
Like I said, it's been a long time. Sorry about the camera here, guys. I got to untangle the cord. So sorry about, you know, like I said, I've got to do a little bit more research on it. So if you can see over this way, um, this is the clownfish breeding area up here. So that's kind of like the cord I have. I can't really do downstairs yet um, unless I want to carry it around. But that's um, the upstairs. We're upstairs right now in the office area of the fish barn. So, uh, yeah, so Chris, uh, yes, thank you for subbing to the channel, Chris. I appreciate it. So, yeah, so that's, um, yeah, so that's basically what we've got uh, in the upstairs. There's a downstairs section, too. So that's, uh, so I probably do need to do a tour on my phone. Uh, it's just that, you know, with this setup right now, the way it's set up here, um, it's more kind of like how like a Corey or Joel would do it, you know, if they have the, you know, they have the, the stationary here, stationary items here. So I do have the phone and the gimbal and I, we can walk around and take a tour. Uh, so I have to work on, you know, I'll schedule that and, you know, maybe we'll do that uh, next week. We'll do a little walk around here at the fish barn. And like I said, I've been cleaning it up. It's been kind of a mess out here. Um, you know, you work on a project for so long, you kind of get tired of doing it. So I've been doing this since March of uh, this year. So it started out as a, um, I pull it up on my, uh, no, of course, no, do, do I only do salt? No, actually, it's kind of a 50-50. Um, kind of my history is I actually started out in salt water. for. So I did salt water for, I still do salt water for, um, I still do it. So it's, I've been doing salt water for about 10 years. And probably over the last two, I've been getting more into the freshwater side. And I kind of, um, I started fishing again. I fished when I was a kid. And, uh, and yeah, so I started fishing when I was a kid. And I kind of started fishing again. And I kind of got drawn back into the beauty of the freshwater fish too. So... I've kind of been really getting into that. So if, if you were to look at the tank right through the middle here, and I wonder if we can see them. So I'll take you guys around through here again. Sorry to look at my bad wall. So that first tank there has um, Pundamilia nyeri, which are um, a Lake Victorian cichlid. Um, I picked those up a couple weeks ago at a uh, an aquarium auction. So definitely, so I'm kind of, excuse me, kind of expanding my roots a little bit. Yeah, so let me maybe schedule next week. We'll do a, a, a fish room tour, and I'll do it. I'll figure out how to do it on my phone, and we can walk around. And you know, I've got the gimbal and everything, and I got the mic, and we can do that. Um, we can do that. It'll be a lot, uh, and we can talk about all the tanks and the filtration. Uh, we could go for probably quite a while with that. Um, the only problem is if we do it at nine, uh, like right, literally within the next couple minutes here, the lights are going to go off. So. Uh, they're all set up on a Neptune Apex system, so uh, you're gonna lose. Uh, we're gonna lose lose light, so we might have to do it at like an eight thirty, and I've got to work that out with my uh, wife and kids and stuff. Because usually I do this when they go to bed, uh, so you know my wife's got some help up in the house, and et cetera. So it's about thirty feet or so from the house, so it's kind of a long. It's, the walk is getting longer as it's getting colder. Yeah, see, we just lost the lights. So I have a light in here that's not on the timer, but if you just turn back over here now, I just hit 10 o'clock and uh, we're dark. So that's one thing we got to we gotta think about kind of a logistics wise. Maybe that's something that'd be like a weekend stream or something like that. So do you guys have any more questions for me? It's getting to be, been going for about an hour. Uh, see who else do we got on here? So we got seven still on here. So yeah, you know what, Chris? I don't think I really completely answered. Uh, so Chris, it's four a.m. Yes, yeah, so you're up late. So thank you for staying up late and uh, and uh, watching this. So I really do appreciate it. So uh, yeah, so it's um. I was gonna say. Oh, your question: Do I only do salt? So we. So the answer, I think I did answer it. So it's kind of yes and no. Um, I started in salt. Obviously, I'm moving more towards fresh, kind of in the middle. Right now, I say it's 50-50. So, uh, yeah. So I think um, 
you know, I'm going to do some some breeding. I'm hoping to get like those Pendamelia and Nairi. And I have some fish that are downstairs uh, that are pretty cool to watch. Um, they're uh, they're called a uh, Astatilapia ania color. Um, and they were actually at the aquatic experience. So they were, um, yeah, so it's a very, um, it's a very colorful fish. Um, the one I ha the ones that I have are not as big, but um, let me see if I have a picture of the downstairs of the fish farm too, since you guys were asking about it. I'm going to pull it up on my phone. So give me a second here. So there actually is, um, there actually is a playlist of all the videos uh, from the fish barn itself, the construction, like where it started. So let me go ahead here, and I'll pull a link up for you guys of where that started. I'll link the playlist in here. Once we got talking about it. Stream up, and that's not what I want. Hold on. All right, it isn't like me having the YouTube up on the same. All right, there we've got a different browser. Get one that easy. Minimize the screen for a minute. So I hope you guys are not watching the like black screen of death while well I do this. So wait for Firefox. Yeah, so I did this tonight with Google Hangouts just so I could show you guys all the um, you know all the links and do all the screen shares. You probably can do it with um, OBS Studio, but it's sort of uh, I don't know. Like I had, it's a little bit cumbersome for me anyway. So I prefer to do it with this. Sorry for the delay. All right, so we got four folks still. Uh, all right, so let's go to the channel. Well, the web page is slowing down my browser, so let's not. All right, it's not going to let me do it. So let's go ahead back here. So uh, let's go ahead um, and wrap it up for now. Um, I'll put the link in the comments. So I don't want to have you guys watch me surf the Internet while uh, I'll keep you guys waiting. So I'll put it in the comments of the uh, – of the stream but uh but yeah oh yeah so Chris was like okay so yeah so uh, Chris said they'd spawn again yeah they're going they're gonna they've been spawning about every two weeks or so so I'll have another that and they've actually already spawned again so I'll have to do another run of them again I have some ideas maybe about making some filtration. So, uh, yes. So, uh, yes, thank you guys uh, for coming out tonight. Uh, so, so I have a big RO unit. No, I actually don't. I actually, I really don't like the RO um, part of it because of all the wastewater. So I've been actually running a uh, push system through it. 
So when we do the stream, um, when we stream the, the fish room tour, we'll actually go through and talk about, um, we'll talk about that. We'll go through the auto water change and all of the, all the stuff that's going on out here. Oh, so you're, oh, you're speaking about your discus. Okay, sorry. Sorry about that, Chris. So I'm going to go ahead and sign it off, but I uh, appreciate you guys for coming out. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, and uh, we'll do it again. Uh, we'll do it again next week. So um, I'll see if I can get something together to um, to do the uh, to do the walkthrough. I think that would be a lot of fun. Uh, I think it'd be interesting to a lot of people. So uh, as I said, I appreciate you guys hanging out tonight, and it's been a lot of fun. So with that, um, I will see you on the next one.